Hello everyone, my name is Pixhorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at the brand new trees that you can get in the Nether update. The new Crimson and Warped trees. We're going to take a look at Nylium, and we're going to take a look at what it takes to farm some of this stuff. We're going to focus on farming Nylium today, because that's a little bit easier than farming the other stuff automatically, but we are going to be working on an automatic farm for this stuff a little bit later. But first, I think we should probably take a little bit of a trip through exactly how you can acquire this stuff and what on earth it all does. And so for that exploration, we return to exploring its native land, the Nether, where you will find huge fungi of both the crimson and warped kind growing in large numbers in their respective forests. And tearing one of these things down, as we've seen, is simply a matter of whipping out the nearest hoe and going to town on this. <laughs> it's actually very, very simple to get farming this stuff once you have the right equipment. And even if you don't have the right equipment, you can probably make a dent pretty easily. The reason you might want to make a dent is that these brand new stem blocks actually convert into wood. And from there, you can take that through the entire crafting progression of Minecraft. You can make wooden tools, use those to harvest some blackstone, use the blackstone to make stone tools, go trading with some piglins once you can mine gold, and then you can get iron and all sorts of other stuff from them. So it ultimately comes down to a tool progression that is available in the nether and some brand new building blocks that are available to us as players. I've been playing around with the warped and crimson wood a little bit, and I really like both of them, actually. It turns out that you can do some really, really neat stuff with it, and so I might want to farm large quantities of this for use in my builds, both in the nether, the overworld, and potentially even in the end as well. In order to get hold of large quantities of this stuff, you will need to grab some of these crimson and warped fungi that you will find growing on the forest floors of these respective biomes, thanks to the huge carpet of nylium. You'll find a warped nylium in the warped forest and crimson nylium in the crimson forests. All makes sense so far, right? It's all pretty straightforward. So in order to get more of these fungi, because they will not drop from the nether warp blocks that form the uh, the crown of each of these giant trees, you will instead need to bone meal a large area of nylium. And then once you clear away the roots and stuff, you will find that one or two of the fungi have spawned. And you'll notice that sometimes it will even spawn crimson fungi in a warp forest and vice versa. It does not discriminate about which one. There you go. It does not discriminate about which forest each of these grows in. However, it is not going to be possible to bone meal a crimson fungus when it stands on warped nylium. And likewise, you cannot grow a warped fungus on crimson nylium. They each need to be on their respective parts. And really, will you try to stop exploding things when I'm trying to make a video? Honestly, these ghasts have no respect. So anyway, we're going to pop down a crimson fungus there, and we will grow it on the crimson nylium. And as you can see, that immediately grows. Whereas on the warped nylium, you will need to grow a warped fungus. Once again, that's pretty straightforward. Each material corresponds to its respective biome and its respective type of nylium. But how do we acquire more nylium when it grows in the nether naturally? Well, all you need to do is bone meal a block of netherrack adjacent to the nylium in a 3x3 area. So it can go any of the four cardinal directions, and it can also go diagonally. So right here, we can make a diagonal path of nylium leading out from this forest. But if we want to naturalize it, all we need to do is do a bunch of bone mealing and put up with the excessive amount of green particles that seem to occur every time you do this. So that's pretty straightforward. And all you've got to do then is clear out the entire thing with a silk touch pickaxe, maybe replace the hole with some netherrack, and then bone meal it again to convert that back to nylium. While we are still standing here in the nether, and before we return to the overworld to consider farming this stuff en masse, I do want to point out that when you bone meal the netherrack around here to create nylium, you are just moving the blocks around. You are not creating a new biome. It is still going to be nether wastes over here. So look at the biome data on the left hand side there. We're in a warped forest right now. I cross over into this area that I've been bone mealing the nylium. That is still a nether wastes biome, which means the spawning rules of the nether wastes biome still apply. You will still get these incredibly pushy zombified piglins. You will still get regular piglins spawning and you won't find that the endermen spawn the same way they do in regular warped forests. But now we've seen the nylium in its natural environment. So let's take it out of that natural environment environment and return to the overworld to see how we can farm this stuff for our own purposes. 
So here we are back in the overworld and we're over here at my tree farming area, which as you can see, I've been using to farm a lot of giant spruce trees because every time you grow those, a huge area of podzol generates. But I have placed down these few blocks of nylium here just so we can do a little bit of demonstration about exactly how some of the stuff on here grows. I've got some bone meal and I've also set up an auto composter for all of the stuff I don't need. Just a composter with a couple of hoppers in it. You guys probably know how to automate this stuff at this point in the series. Uh, anyway, if you bone meal this stuff, you'll notice that the crimson foliage actually grows outside of the boundary of these blocks itself. So you don't need a large area of nylium in order to generate enough foliage. This crimson fungus is probably what we want the most, but we of course have all of these crimson roots here which do not need shears for you to break them. So we can compost those because I'm not exactly planning on using those for anything much in particular. There we go, got ourselves a little bit of extra bone meal. We got some cash back from that one. The same goes for the warped nylium over there. You end up uh, bone mealing that and that will generate two different types of foliage here. You'll notice the crimson generates only one, I guess with the fungus being an exception there. And the warped nylium will generate two. It will generate these warped roots, which are basically the warped equivalent of these crimson roots. And it will generate these, these kind of warped sprouts, I believe they're called. And I don't know if I have a silk touch tool on me, but no, it looks like we do not get those with silk touch. We do, however, get them with shears. So let me go grab a pair of shears so I can demonstrate this. So with the shears here, you can see, there we go, we're able to trim those. No silk touch required, but shears definitely required. So once again, that's something that shears can do that hose still cannot. And you get nether sprouts with these. They're not even warped. They are just nether sprouts. And I believe we can still place these down on anything that constitutes grass so you can start mixing these in in the grasses of the overworld and I think these would look really good in a mountain biome maybe somewhere there's a little bit of frost and you still have that blue tint to the grass where it is frozen overnight having these nether sprouts as dead grass amongst the snow just seems like a really natural fit to me so yeah give that a try if you're looking for more details to add into your world anyway back over at our tree farming area I've grabbed a little bit more bone meal I've planted the fungi on their respective nylium colors and with a little bit of bone meal applied to each of these, we can grow ourselves some kind of cool looking warped mushrooms, actually. That's that's very, very cool. So what we need to do is strip off the warp blocks with the hoe and then take an axe to the stems to get all of that lovely new crimson and warped wood. However, once you've taken the tree down, you will probably find that if you haven't taken it down quickly enough, the nylium underneath has reverted back to netherrack. And that's why I've left these blocks of nylium on either side, because then you can just simply bone meal the netherrack one more time and it will grow back. So both of these grew over with warped nylium, but it really doesn't matter where you bone meal it on the block or which side of the block you're looking at or anything like that. If you have two adjacent different types of nylium next to netherrack, it's just going to choose one of them at random. And so maybe if you want to randomize an area of nylium where these two are competing, you can just put them equal distance from each other and start randomly spamming bone meal in the middle of the area. But now we can grow a few more warped fungi, the process will begin again, and maybe it will choose to grow crimson nylium next Next time once we've taken down this tree. But the process of bone mealing, the nylium, and all of this stuff can seem a little bit slow. It does feel like the process could be automated, it could be improved a little bit, it could be streamlined. Besides that, I think it's going to be nice to get hold of a large quantity of these nylium blocks just to store somewhere, and that way if we want to create a large biome of the stuff somewhere else, or in my case, I want to terraform some sections of the nether which I didn't trim out of the world when I reset sections of the nether biome, I think we're going to want to make an automatic farm for nylium itself. And for that, I think we're going to turn to a location we have not been to for a little while. And that is down here in the basement of Brimstone Castle here in Founders Forge because I created this sliding door a while ago using honey blocks and slime blocks and I've been looking for the right occasion to do something behind this, to maybe turn it into some sort of secret lab. Originally, I planned a large super smelter behind here, but I think for now, we're going to turn this into the castle's nether research lab because it's right close to the portal. The portal is just over there, so the scientists or whoever <laughs> ends up occupying this space could bring back large quantities of nether resources for experimentation. And I think we're going to set up a beacon. We're going to dig out a large area inside of this place, convert it into a kind of science lab, and there we're going to start printing nylium. Hey folks, welcome back. So I've been doing a little bit of digging and this is where we're at right now. I kind of like the nether materials a lot when used in combination. The nether has this kind of cohesive, 
color palette now that I think works really, really well if you keep the materials together. So over here, obviously, we have a little bit of the crimson wood. We have blackstone stairs and slabs mixed in here and there as well. We also have a bit of polished blackstone, some polished basalt, and then that blends into the stone brick and we get the more natural materials from the overworld. This side is exactly the same, just with the warped wood instead of crimson. Warped planks feel to me like they have a little bit more contrast than the uh, crimson planks do. I feel like maybe just the brightness of the color is contrasting with how deep the lines are, whereas this one, it sort of blends together a little bit better. But they both have their merits, and I like them both quite a lot. I also thought it would be nice to kind of pair the matching colors, the sort of the colors that worked best with each of these sides. So we have the warped planks on the side with the slime and the crimson on the side with the honey blocks. And in the back area of this room here is where we are really going to start mass producing some nylium. So what I want is to have a six block wide section of nylium that comes out of the wall basically here, more or less. Anyway, uh, we're going to have the pistons that push it out into a kind of carpet that leads up to about there is where it's going to stop. Maybe a couple of blocks further forward if it needs to go there. But I think it's going to be fun to have this whole area here that we can just silk touch easily with the pickaxe. And then the floor underneath is wood, meaning that the pickaxe won't be able to break it quite as fast. And I think that's going to work out pretty well. But first of all, I'll show you guys a couple of really small, compact, and very, very useful farms for farming a large amount of nylium in a very small amount of space. And then we'll work on the big kind of 3D printer version over here at the back. So this farm design is going to be a lot like some concrete converters that we have made before. It's going to be very, very simple. We'll need a bunch of netherrack, which I brought here in the shulker boxes. We'll need a little bit of redstone, but really not all that many redstone components. We'll need some existing nylium. But perhaps the most important thing is you want to have a pickaxe with silk touch, but without efficiency. And I will explain exactly why this is in just a second. But first of all, let's start assembling this thing. So of course, we want the blocks that we place down here to be detected by an observer. The observer is going to send out a redstone pulse. So we're going to have that come through the back here, over the top of this, into a block of nylium there, which is going to have the dispenser next to it. And the block of nylium serves two purposes here. It is a block there from which the nylium can be bone mealed to transfer over to some netherrack we're going to be placing here and it's also providing redstone power directly to the dispenser with this piece of redstone wire running over the top of it now grab yourselves 64 bone blocks or as much bone meal as you can carry i say 64 a stack of bone blocks will actually fill up a dispenser because it's made of nine stacks of bone meal so that's nice and easy for you to take care of and then all you need to do is place down a block of netherrack here and it will both convert into nylium, and then it will pulse a second time, which might occasionally produce some nether foliage for you. I'm going to put a block of wood underneath here just so I don't break it as easily with a pickaxe while I demonstrate this, because the idea behind this farm is that you just stand here with a pickaxe in one hand and some netherrack in the other hand, and you hold down both buttons and you end up placing a lot of netherrack and breaking it at the same time. The problem being, as you just saw, if we use a pickaxe that has efficiency like this one does, efficiency 5, it's going to be the fastest you can possibly mine plus I also have haste around here right now which may affect things a little bit you're going to break the netherrack faster than the dispenser can actually bone meal because it's going to be faster than the observer can pick it up you are insta mining basically every block you see come through here however if I switch to a pickaxe that has silk touch and doesn't have efficiency I can actually place and break the blocks pretty fast still even though I have haste right now that is not really affecting it too badly and as you'll see everywhere all of these are being converted into nylium. We are not missing a single one. And so every time I end up with a stack of netherrack in my offhand, I can pretty much be guaranteed a stack of nylium once we're done converting it. This is also getting us a little bit of crimson root, which I guess I will just end up composting. We might set up a composter set up down here like we have in our tree farm further up. But the last touch you could add to this is to put another dispenser or dropper underneath where you're standing, or maybe even next to where you are standing. You could just have that here. And that would provide netherrack to you permanently if you just added a hopper to the back of it with a storage chest or something like that. I don't have any hoppers in there. I need to get some hoppers. Anyway, all that would need to do would be to have the wire go over one more block. And then that would power this dispenser as well because it's powering the dispenser block here. And that would allow it to constantly spit out netherrack to replace the stuff in your offhand, making sure that the rest of your inventory was full of nylium so that you could just pick up the nylium and the netherrack would just go back into your offhand 
when it dropped. So all you would need to do would be start with a bit of netherrack in your offhand and then simply start placing that and as you can see the dispenser on my right is now filling my offhand up with netherrack. Now you will find that this is pulsing multiple times because each time the dispenser detects a piece of netherrack there and it converts into nylium, it pulses a second time because the conversion to nylium is detected as a block state change. So you might find your pockets filling up with netherrack quite quickly, but all you need to do is recycle anything that falls on the ground and you should be good to go. I think I'm going to make this side of the warped nylium factory because of course we've got warped planks over here. I'm going to make another identical one on the opposite side that's going to be the crimson nylium factory. And we can block all of these in just to make sure that all of the nylium ends up in my inventory and not spitting out all over the place like it was a second ago. So I put together a concept for the Nylium printer at the back here, but I have realized that there are a couple of major flaws with it. So I'm not going to show you guys all of this build because frankly, I may have overcomplicated some stuff anyway. It started with the idea of wanting to push the Nylium around with zero tick pistons, which worked perfectly well the first time around. As you can see, the zero ticking behavior of pistons does still exist, despite the fact that zero tick crop growth has been patched, but the zero tick piston behavior remains, which means we can shuffle some of this stuff around. And with the right timing here, it works. However, I had to shove in a little bit of extra timing and add a repeater there so that more than one piston would fire in this setup. Watch what happens if I take out this repeater and replace that with a redstone dust, which in theory tightens up the timings a little bit on this circuit and allows the entire thing to zero tick. It's absolutely fine if I end up placing a block right there myself by hand. But if I end up zero ticking the blocks along from this side, you'll notice that once I do that, only one of the blocks moves. The others all stay where they are, meaning that we cannot zero tick everything in a line. It will not fire all of the pistons at once. And this section here would just end up trailing along the floor. Not exactly what we want. Secondly, I had to apply the same level of timing to this set of pistons down here and frankly, this whole setup was a little bit overcomplicated. So I've gone back to the drawing board in my creative test world, and instead I decided that we would do things slightly differently. First of all, we're going to move this setup of pistons down to floor level. I really didn't need the area where it came across and then moved downwards. It was going to look quite cool, but ultimately we're not really necessary for the contraption itself. So we'll take all of these pistons down, and I really love the fact that pistons can be broken instantly with a pickaxe. Now it makes it so much easier to deal with. And we're going to set up these pistons over here with a redstone torch there and some redstone dust feeding up the back here. Once again, we are going to have to replace this section here with a repeater so that all the pistons will fire if we end up pushing the blocks along super fast, but we might end up just pushing them along at the pace of a regular smart piston, which is not going to be zero tick speed, but it's going to be good enough for what we have in mind here. Next, I've set up a couple of things over here. We have a piston with a redstone torch and a dot, kind of similar to the zero tick piston setup, except without the extra piston updating this one to make it super fast. We have a dispenser right here, which we're going to fill with bone meal. I'll just throw a couple of stacks in there for now for demonstration purposes. And here we have a couple of switches which we can use to extend these two sticky pistons behind here, which push either the crimson nylium forward or the warped nylium forward and that is going to determine whether we produce crimson or warped nylium or potentially both when we end up putting the netherrack through the system here. So we can fill in the rest of this section here so that these switches remain the only thing visible on the wall. We have to make sure that these blocks here do not have blocks above them otherwise they will revert back to netherrack and we won't have the nylium here anymore and they would have to be replaced. But let's say for the sake of this example we want the warped nylium to come forward, right? All we need to do is throw some netherrack down here. Every time it gets pushed past the dispenser here, it gets converted automatically into warp nylium. And then once it reaches the end of the line, like so, it gets pushed forward into the room and becomes our carpet of nylium that we get to silk touch when all of this is over and done with. Now, if I want to bring some crimson nylium in the mix, all I have to... Ah, okay. <laughs> I was a little bit worried that would happen. That piston is now getting diagonally powered by that block. So we're going to have to move this whole setup one block back. Okay, I've moved the whole setup one block over, so there are two pieces of redstone dust there. It still performs basically the same function, and we want to clear out this area of nylium here because it's going to affect the output of the farm now, but all we should need to do is pull this lever, <laughs> that one there, and this should now produce crimson nylium instead. And if we wanted to produce both, then we can activate both levers 
and it will randomly choose which one it assigns to the next block, meaning that we get a mixture of it getting pushed out into the room ready to harvest with Silk Touch. So it's a little bit bare bones, but for a Nylium randomizer, it's really not bad, and it does avoid there being any redstone components on top of these things at any point, which can lead to the Nylium instantly reverting back to Netherrack. Sometimes it takes a few seconds, sometimes it is a lot quicker than that, and it can happen in the space of a single random tick, so we just need to be prepared for that. There are a couple of other designs which we might want to explore given that this whole switch situation was a little bit of an issue. So let me clear this section out and let me see what else we can come up with. Here is another very, very easy setup. We have the same piston mechanism over here, making sure that the netherrack gets put against the piston head. It gets pushed along this area and it hits the torch at the end, making sure this row of pistons pushes it in this direction. At the same time, when that gets pushed over here, it gets picked up by this observer, which triggers a line of redstone dust down here with repeaters facing into blocks below these dispensers, powering each of the dispensers, which contains bone meal. Now, at first, this will do nothing, and it will also do nothing if we don't pull one of these two levers for our Nylium color selector, because that's what's going to choose which Nylium we end up using and again you can turn on both levers to get both in the pan. Now the remarkable thing about this design is that let's use the warp Nylium as an example here. When we end up filling the entire thing up with netherrack and it reaches this point you would expect it to only bone meal the blocks immediately adjacent to the Nylium block but it actually does something completely different. I'm going to try my best to stand on this side so you can see it out of the corner of your eye when these blocks move. There we go. It actually bone meals all of them. And I think what's happening here, although it's very instantaneous, so it's not really possible to see this, but I think what's happening here is that each of these blocks is receiving the Nylium from the block on either side. So these three blocks here should be the only ones that are available to receive this color of Nylium. But I think what's happening is that these next blocks are actually getting the Nylium from the blocks adjacent to them. <laughs> and the fun thing is, once we've started this off, it sort of triggers a chain reaction. So now if I end up placing more Netherrack in here, when it gets moved, it's gonna pick up the Nylium from the next block over. And it is more likely, even if we turn on the Crimson Nylium here to receive this Nylium because it's right next door. But I think we can slowly convert this floor into Crimson if we just use a few blocks here. There we go, a couple of them ended up getting moved over there. We can probably create a Crimson pattern on this side and you'll see that slowly start to spread. But the blue persisted, strength in numbers, I guess, after all of that, and we ended up with a whole bunch of blue in this, but a sort of randomized red vein in our Nylium floor pattern, which once again, we can just take this entire thing out with Silk Touch, and I'm pretty sure I knocked over a couple of shulker boxes there, but those should be just fine as long as they get picked up and in my inventory. Now we've removed all that other Nylium though, I can continue placing Netherrack over here, and now all of the Netherrack we see come through here should end up being Crimson Nylium. Oh, that's odd. That's really odd. I was expecting it to spread from this side as easily as it spread from that side, but maybe it's because the observer is over here and the redstone signal originates from over here. That's very, very curious. But as you'll see, it's able to spread diagonally each time. So we're only losing a few blocks there. And I guess if we wanted to, we could move this piston one block over and then I think it'd be closer to the center where it might be able to spread a little bit more easily. It's closer, but I guess not. We are still missing that corner. Well, never mind. All we'd need to do would be swap over the Nylium blocks in either position. We could even use some sort of like block swapper setup in the middle here if we wanted to. That shouldn't be a problem. And of course, what we end up with is a nice Nylium carpet randomizer here where we can just throw in as much Netherrack as we want to. It all gets converted into random colors of Nylium and we'll end up being able to pick that up from the other end. So in the end, that is not looking too bad, and it's certainly possible to generate a whole carpet of Nylium this way. You could also, if you wanted to, hook up another observer, another dispenser, or even run a redstone signal from that row of dispensers further down here so you could end up bone mealing this whole area and generating some of the foliage from the Nylium or Crimson as you went, and then you'd just be able to pick that up as you went and silk touched the rest of this. Unfortunately, it's not really possible to automatically harvest the Nylium since it does require silk touch. You can't just blow it up with TNT because that would convert it back into netherrack. But even so, 
it is possible to generate this stuff on a sort of automatic basis and I'm pretty happy with the results. I hope you guys will be as well and these little mini nylium converters are always there for you if you just want to hold down two buttons and AFK for a while. But folks, that is going to be where we leave today's episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like on it for me if you have. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.